with our logistics, our inventory, our shipping and our customer service. And, and frankly, he's just been doing a brilliant job. I'm very proud of him. And he's going to be helping through this entire process. So Josiah has been very interactive with all of our processes in the manufacturing and in the shipping. So he's very qualified to, to answer very specific questions. Uh, so I want to introduce him to the program. You'll be seeing him in our live comments, and many of you already have. So with that, I'm going to have him administrate the computer because uh, these older eyes don't see the text as well. And we're going to just start answering questions. Tell me who's in the chat there. So it looks like we have board games everybody should. Yeah. Hey, chap. My buddy, Barry. Hey, hey, buddy. Uh, Bass Plant says he has uh, several questions. So yeah, go ahead and ask those questions in the chat and we'll answer them as soon as we have them. Absolutely. Uh, and then Family Game Night says I was awesome at Origins. Or maybe he means you in that case, but. Uh, he was awesome at Origins. Wow. Well, thank you, Chris. I believe this is Chris Godot, if I'm pronouncing it right. I didn't realize when he had posted the other day uh, what his, uh, uh, when, when he was posting, he was also part of Family Game Night. So that's pretty cool. Thanks a lot for all your support, Chris. And Joseph is in the house. Yeah, and his son. All right. Oh, hi, Berkey and son, he says. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. It looks like Donna says she can hear and see everything okay. So please just go ahead and shoot and your questions and I'll give you a little bit of an overview of what's happening while we're waiting for these questions to load of what we're doing on Game Toppers 2.0. Um, one of the things that we've been so excited about is the response of all of our backers. Uh, we were able to successfully deliver over 1,400 packages. Many of those packages were uh, on time or even ahead of time. And, and most of, we had a few little snags in our, our fulfillment of our last campaign where our luxuriant die, where the aluminum was pushed, actually cracked. And so they had to remake the die. So we had to modulate a little bit and deliver our standard toppers first and then the luxuriant. But overall, we performed pretty well. And because of all of the things that we do in manufacturing, my manufacturer is right here in Fergus Falls, Minnesota, and it's a significant company with significant resources. They do all of the uh, overhead design uh, displays for Target and Best Buy, and they do big contracts with SD Louder. Uh, they have many large CNC machines and engineers on staff and capability to modulate, to respond. Um, last year, we had several things that you know, we're human beings, we make mistakes, things happen. Um, it was a really small little thing, but on some of our rails, for instance, they didn't tap the hole quite long enough, but we caught it immediately and we were able to send out the new screws to everybody within a week and we were able to respond, you know? So I think that's the big thing. Um, I, I don't like to overpromise it, people anything, but I've, I've done a lot ahead of time to ensure that we're going to give you a fantastic product. And if you do have any issues or if we make a mistake that we can respond quickly because I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. And my backers know that about me. We respond quickly and I care deeply about making this a great experience for you. So with that, uh, we're going to talk about a lot of new products, but we're, it looks like the chat is being <laughs> fed now with some questions. So we'll try to try to keep up. So Bass Planet asks first for the Watson Dragon Sculpt, uh, saying he sees it has one actual sculpt per side. Uh, and I think there's a bit of a, maybe a bit of a confusion there is we have the images on the Kickstarter are of our Lestrade size toppers. So that only has four rails. Um, the Watson would actually be similar to the Holmes, but the question is he's pledged for the Holmes Dragon Sculpt. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you, uh, awesome. He's asking, does that mean it will have two carvings per side? Or is it just the carving, you know, in, in one side that, or in the middle of the split? Yeah, that's a fantastic question because you have two halves of your home's topper. And that means you have two side rails for each half. And each of those side rails will have the custom engraving. Now, we have one of the dragon 
uh, pledges right in front of us. We have these slats put in a prototype Lestrade. And so I'm going to pull one out for you, and I'm actually going to show you. We we just have them kind of sitting in here. Let's see if I can get a hold of it. It's a bit tricky. It's a little bit tricky. I probably need a little bit of a tool here. Oh, I got it. Normally, what these rails, you're going to see Dog Mike Games. They are amazing. Look at this thing. Is it fantastic or what? Josiah, could you perhaps just go grab one of those uh, Viking rails as well? Will they come out or are they taped? Um, we're going to try to show you some close-ups. This is made out of ash, um, and it is stained in Dogmite Games demon blood. It's fantastic. These are a quarter-inch solid wood, and then we adhere them with a – do we have the rail? We have the rail in that extra bag. So the, the, the rails are wonderfully crafted, and you'll have two of these sculpts on each side to answer your question. This here is the Viking. Look at that. It is gorgeous. I got to tell you, the pictures on our site, um, when, when you actually see this sculpt, look at this. Um, the pictures on the website, they just don't do it justice. These are absolutely gorgeous. They're to, in order for us to make these, it's a significant logistics thing. That's why you're seeing the cost so much. We're not trying to get greedy. We just knew that we could only do a limited amount of these. And there's a process of a, us getting the wood made exactly to specification, sending it to Dogmine for them to do their handcrafted uh, workmanship that they do. It gets sent back to us and we individually assemble every one of these and make sure that everything's really nice on them. So there's a big process that goes into this, but we wanted to do something really cool, right? And these things are, I got to tell you, they're just flipping awesome. They're When you see them, you're going to... They're just awesome. Those that saw them at Origins, they just, oh, they got pretty excited. So let's go on to the next question. Uh, so we have uh, Family Game Night in WV says, tell us about this awesome Ryan Lockett match. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Ryan Lockett, what can I say? Uh, uh, an amazing designer, an amazing artist. I mean, he designs games, he does the artwork, and he produces them. Uh, it's virtually unheard of for someone to have that set of skill sets. Um, Ryan is an affiliate of ours. He uses our topper in their show kit for Red Raven Games, and we've become friends. And And uh, I, I pitched this idea to him, and I just said, what do you think? I said, your fans love your art style, and I love your art style. Could we possibly collaborate? And when he said yes, man, I got so excited because I, I just love his stuff. And so I, I said, well, one of the things that important to our backers is that we keep the art assets all the way around the edges of the map. So it doesn't interfere with our gameplay. And so he said, yeah, I have an idea how we could frame that in an enchanted fantasy, romantical kind of look, you know, and he came up with this beautiful map. You'll see the pictures on the Kickstarter campaign. Um, he's still working on some refinements of the background, um, but I think this thing, and when you see it inside of a table, like on the black powder coat, woohoo! it's just, and it looks really great with the natural oak finish too. I'm just crazy impressed with it. I know the Ryan Lockett fans are going to love that. And if you play Haven or any of his other games, you'll love that. But the environment is such that you could play all kinds of different fantasy type of games. And even Wingspan would probably look pretty cool on that. Uh, the next question from Joel Rojas says, how much overhang can the table have? Can I put a four by four game topper on a three by three table or a six by four game topper on a four by four table? Um, great, great questions. Um, we do have some information in the facts that will help you with that. And there's a sizing chart. Um, first off, we'll just say it like this. The best recommendation that we have for a game topper is that you do one inch less 
than the outside dimension of the topper. Okay, that's our best recommendation. And the reason we say best recommendation is because that means that every rail is fully supported by an under table. So if you have a solid under table, you won't even know that this isn't a solid table because our 3M rubberized material that's on the bottom of these rails it does a bunch of things, but a couple of things it does is it protects your fine furniture. So you don't have to worry. We've never had a complaint about a table being damaged. Secondly, because of the cross supports, and we have a video right on the front page showing this in detail, um, that your topper literally will not move. Uh, you'll move the table generally before you move the topper. Uh, so it, it works brilliantly. But however, we have engineered, and this was a very important design element. People still have a hard time wrapping their head around this. Every one of the reviewers, uh, they, they made this comment. How does it stay on here? How does it not move? Um, this is on a 30-inch table, and it's overhanging several inches. Why does it work? Well, the reason it works is partially that rubberized material. Secondly, we have cross supports that go under each half of the topper. When you connect that topper together with the connector cleat, it becomes one huge unit that becomes very stable. And that's why we recommend no more than nine inches overhang on a topper. Um, the less overhang, the more stable is depending on your table. So uh, in regards to your first question, the three by three under table, our Lestrade works fantastic on those actually. That's what most of the publishers that use our toppers in their show kits at a lot of the big conventions that use. We have over 30 publishers like Cool Mini or Not and, and Arcane Wonders and Gray Fox Games, Academy Games. Uh, the list goes on and on. Renegade Game Studios, we're doing a ton of stuff with them at Gen Con this year and 8EG and a lot of wonderful Thunderworks games. And they, they actually, at Origins, they were demoing role player on a Lestrade with just a simple little 36 by 36 inch table. Now to the second part of your question, he's asking if I put a four by four game topper on a three by three, but then he asks a six by four topper on a four by four. That one, I would actually say the width is perfect. You're great there. You're going to have excellent cross support uh, on the width but the ends are gonna be just a little bit short. I would recommend that you have a little longer table. So if your under table has a leaf that you could extend it, or if you could support the ends better for a four by six, a four by six Mycroft topper. And there's a lot of, lot of um, uh, clarification I think I wanna make with our backers. Our new design Mycroft is basically a Moriarty, which is four by four, and a 24 inch extension leaf that makes it four foot by six foot. And that means there's two connector cleats because of the leaf. So if you had a, a long six foot table like the Mycroft and you only have a four foot table, you might get a little bit of bowing. It's all gonna hold together. It'll actually sit on there, but I'd be concerned about the ends being supported. So I would highly recommend for the Mycroft Make sure you have a good under table for it. I hope that that helps clarify that. Uh, board games, everybody should ask if he buys three maps, will he have to pay three times the postage? Oh, that's a great question, Barry. Um, basically, the way our, our map bundles are working, we have some exciting things that we're going to be offering about our maps. I know many of you have pledged for our maps. Uh, thank you. These these mats are awesome, right? They're three millimeter premium stitched edge, incredible artwork. I'm, I'm so thrilled with them. But one thing about the mats, they're very heavy because of the quality that we use. They're three millimeter and each mat, depending on the size, can range from seven to 12 pounds. So they're significant to ship, but we have really aggressive shipping rates. And one thing we're going to be revealing in the campaign is when you buy two bags, we're gonna be able to save you a lot of money on shipping. So the answer is no, you're not going to have to pay a separate shipping charge per mat. We're gonna be able to bundle those to give you the best shipping rate, depending on how many mats you buy. 
many of our backers own six and eight of our, our mats. They love them. You want to play a space game, man. You want that space mat. If you're playing a, a war game, you want that war terrain green, or you're playing Dead of Winter, that white mat is like gorgeous that we have here. And the Adventure mat was our number one selling mat. Uh, well, now with the new Viking mat, <laughs> what did you say about that thing? Is it in there? Oh, yeah, I had it. Um, I the the Viking mat. I got to tell you, we ordered uh, at significant expense a sample. Well, we knew the art was fantastic. We loved it. This is from the artist Yaroslav, who did Reavers of Midgard. But when we got the mat, here it comes. Look at this bad boy. I don't know if you can see the close-ups. Let's show them the close-up of the mountain up in your corner there. You see something hiding up in the mountain. <laughs> um, what's so great about these mats too, because of our manufacturer and because of the three m the three millimeter thickness and the stitched edge, these mats don't get a a memory like a lot of smaller, thinner mats have, and they just roll out so fantastic. Um, but look at this artwork. I mean, it's it's just. It's so much better in person. Um, I just ordered some of the samples of the scythe inspired mat that we're doing that's this beautiful resource mat. And it, and it was all inspired by scythe and Jamie Stegmeier from Stonemeyer Games. I gotta tell you, I love him as a person. He's helped me uh, so much in Kickstarter and he doesn't even know it, but he's influenced my life. I listen to all of his Kickstarter videos and listen to his blogs and read them and all that kind of thing and just have great admiration for how he treats his customers. And nonetheless, I asked him if we could work out an arrangement to do this. And he said, absolutely. He loves to see creative processes that help support a game. He just wants us to be clear, this is not a Stonemeyer Games project. It's not an official Stonemeyer Games product, but we do have permission to make these. And uh, he was uh, really impressed with the quality of the artwork as well. So this scythe map, when we get that scythe inspired map, when we get that in, we'll show it to you. I'm hoping we'll get it here with, before the campaign ends, but it's, it's crazy awesome. And we're going to continue to get better on these. You just you just wait. I hope we answered that question okay. Uh, the next question from Bass Plant again says, second, I love the idea of the smaller footprint of the Connelson, but would love to see it in a size for larger mats. Any possibility? Yeah, that's a great question. In fact, that's exactly what we will be unlocking is we have a, a medium size mat that is a storage rack that we're calling the JJ Burton. Uh, the, you'll, 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 if you watch the Sherlock Holmes mystery videos, you'll see a little bit of the Easter egg there. But the JJ Burton is a four hole storage solution. This particular rack, I have one here actually, it's made out of the same material that our floor is, it's called EPVC. The stuff is waterproof. The screw retention on the corners is incredibly durable. I cannot pull them apart. I can't demonstrate it well with the webcam here, but you're going to be seeing more information on this. We may be modifying the bottom to include a panel so that um, uh, your mats won't slip through so you could actually hang this on the wall. Um, this is a fantastic Nice little piece. We have four of these prototypes downstairs that we store all of our mats in, and it's just way cool now, right? Uh, what do you do with all these mats? I mean, people have so many of them. They're they're chucking them in the closet, and they're getting crumpled. And you know, honestly, too, this is a good little little thing to talk about is mat uh, care. One of the things our our mats are are have a nice uh, protective finish on them so they they they're somewhat waterproof but and 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 lightly stain proof but it's still polyester so if someone spilt ketchup or something on them they 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 can stain but you can treat them and wash them just like you do any other fabric um, we don't necessarily recommend that you put them in a washing machine we know people that have done it and but that can cause the shape to change slightly if you ever do do that never put them in a dryer that will cause the neoprene, which is basically a rubber material, 
to shrink. Um, and when you dry them, hang them over a rod, like a curtain rod or something of that nature. Um, but basically the best way to store your mats is to roll them. So that's why we came up with these mat solution storage racks. But we also have the big Lord Burton. <laughs> this is a six hole and we have different size holes to accommodate the much larger uh, six foot mats. And even now some of the ones that we're gonna be providing for the XL leaf extension that are eight feet and 84 inches respectively. And this one is beautiful. You'll see a picture on the campaign. We'll show you more about this, but not only does it have the six holes, it has rods that go across so you can hang all of your smaller play mats. Like I have the Champions of Midgard mat that I love from Gray Fox Games and the Mara Nostrum mat from Academy Games, which I really love. And of course my favorite two player game of all time, Baseball Highlights 2045. I have the premium tournament mat for that and it's perfect to drape over these rods. Um, these, the way we're constructing it is very high quality. We're using expensive materials. Um, but I wanted to make sure that they were going to be durable. Those rods are, are not cheap. Uh, there was a lot of different ways to go, but we went with high quality materials to make sure that it would last and look really cool with your game topper. The next question here from Family Game Night says, have you ever thought about coming to some smaller cons like CharCon? I'll hand out some fries and get the table set. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to go to CharCon. It's not in the offering this year. Uh, we, we love to go to conventions and we will be doing a lot of conventions. Uh, this year, our convention circuit's gonna be a little less than normal uh, due to the fact that we're totally sold out of all of our toppers. We have several game mats and some accessories in stock that people can buy now. They're, they're at a higher price than what you're gonna enjoy on the Kickstarter, but we do have some stock of that material, but basically we're out of stock. So uh, going to conventions now is just a big marketing expense. So we had to be a little more careful. Last year we hit 11 conventions and the big convention in Germany, which we were so happy to be a part of that allowed us to offer our new international distribution on this Kickstarter. And we have a fantastic fulfillment partner where we're gonna be able to do really high quality delivery for people. And these, this is a big piece of furniture. So you gotta think about it, not in terms of games anymore. You have to think about it like, like you're buying a couch, you're buying a, a cabinet because this is a big box and we wanna make sure that it, the packaging is, is very stout and very can, can handle the shipping rigors, that type of thing. But we've done that and we've, our fulfillment partner in Germany actually offers this service where you will get a phone call ahead of time to receive your product. In addition, uh, we have uh, worked out arrangements where these packages will be insured. So there's a lot of things that we're doing to, to do high quality service um, and yet do it affordably. And, and we're saving people a ton of money from what it would cost to ship a game topper from the United States right now. So we hope that's affordable enough and, and it, we're really worked hard to, to do a good job on that. Uh, did I answer that question or did I get rabbit trailed? Uh, well, it seems like you <laughs> let's go to conventions. <laughs> oh, conventions. Uh, let me go back to that. I'm going to be at Dice Tower next week just for two days. I'm flying in for some marketing reasons and a couple business meetings. Um, I, I want to stay attentive to the Kickstarter. We may do a live Kickstarter from Dice Tower Con. We'll see if I have good internet. I don't know, so I'm not going to promise, but you're going to see a lot of social media about some of those kind of things. Uh, while I'm gone, Kay King, who has been a fantastic collaborator, uh, she owns six game toppers, so she totally loves game toppers. <laughs> She's the best. Uh, she She's helped us. She worked for Level Up Games in Minneapolis, helped me at the uh, Gamma Trade Show in Reno, and I cannot say enough kind things about Kay. She's like a daughter to me. I love her to death and has been so helpful. And she's very knowledgeable as well about our products. Um, my son, Josiah, likewise, will be helping moderate, but I'll be chiming in and do my best. And if any of you ever have a specific question, you're not getting answered to your satisfaction, you can always email me at Berkey at Game Toppers LLC. Uh, you'll get a response from me unless it goes off into email void and I don't know about it. Uh, I will will get back to you. So thank you for that. And I can be reached at support 
at GameToppersLLC.com. There you so. go. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question from Vastplant again. Third, is there any real possibility of a Holmes extension for the Dragon Sculpts? Yeah, that's going to be a very remote possibility, to be honest. Uh, I, I wrote in our update, and please, please review that. It was a little bit lengthy, but I wanted to really explain our thought processes regarding the XL extension leaf. Uh, this is a great idea, and it all happened because of the redesign of our Mycroft. People are like, are, why did you do that? Well, there was a lot of reasons. Um, half of the Mycroft, of the old Mycroft, was a three foot half, but this caused our packaging to be very close to being close to an over dim uh, shipping rate, which would have cost $500 a unit. We were so close and we wanted to add additional packaging uh, uh, protection and things like that. Um, so that got us talking with the engineers and we knew a lot of people wanted a square larger topper for like mini Warhammer four foot or for a round table, uh, that type of thing. And a three by three just didn't quite cut it. Well, by cutting our halves into 24 inches so that we could make the new Moriarty, all of a sudden we add a 24 inch leaf to make the Mycroft. So we no longer are making Mycrofts with three foot halves. If that if that's clear. Um, so the reason that's important is it allows us to ship in a smaller package, but it also gives you two tables in one without buying it an accessory rail. You basically take the leaf out. You have a Moriarty. You put the leaf in. You have a Mycroft. So that's a that's uh, one of the beauties of that design. What was the rest of the question? <laughs> the, <laughs> the dragon sculpt. Yeah, and, and <laughs> you can see I'm excited about what we're doing, right? Uh, the dragon sculpts are a very custom situation with Dogmite Games, and to make 24 inch pieces of that uh, will be very difficult. Um, in the in the update that I referenced. We talk, I have a lot of previous backers who have the older Waverly stain. This was a darker stain. Uh, that stain is gonna no longer be available. So former backers, uh, we still have some of the Waverly accessory rails in stock. If you do need those, please let us know. But with that said, we have backers that have a, have a luxuriant topper from the past campaign and they want a leaf in luxuriant. Uh, backers that are going to get the new premium walnut or the luxuriant oak, they're wanting it. The difficulty for me is we really need to reach some significant levels for me to add that that skew to our product line. So I'm not saying no at all, but I'm, I'm not making any promises. Currently, we're offering it in the standard, uh, the leaf, and that will work great for the Moriarty uh, that for the, if you want to make a Mycroft XL, a full eight foot one, or if you prior have owned a Holmes or Watson standard, um, you know, if we reach the numbers that I'm hoping for, and we're really hoping for a goal of 750,000 or more. Um, the reason um, we're, we're, we, we set our funding goal low on purpose because we're already starting the manufacturing. Um, but we are offering a lot of new product ideas that need development yet. Our, we're doing some things with our accessories, with this partnership with Dogmite Games and so forth. And I'm confident that we're going to hit near those levels. So we really could use your help for that. But if we hit those levels, like anything, everything is about production in volume. That's what creates efficiencies, uh, price uh, effective uh, cost effective measures is all based on efficiencies and volume. So if if I had to make 25 Waverly leaves, for instance, that would be a significant expense. The good part of all of this is our manufacturers local. And if we do decide to do this, we will be able to modulate. As many of you know, we, we made a lot of offerings available and uh, we may be able to do some limited edition Waverly uh, luxuriant leaf extensions. Um, but again, we need everybody's help to push through to that, to make that available. It'll probably be a, a stretch goal that we'll, we will give everybody some information on. So um, don't lose hope. Um, one way or another, we're going to figure it out, but we really do need some help to make those additional SKUs available. Uh, 
Joseph Ferguson says the 1.0 Kickstarter was one of the best run projects he's ever seen. Uh, back 2.0 with confidence. So ah, thank, thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> That's fantastic, Joseph. We we really do work hard. Uh, we're going to be here for you. We are building a business on solid business principles. And that's one of the things that people say, well, I've heard people say, you know, well, your toppers are expensive. And it's like, well, relatively uh, compared to, you know, what, what's available, I think we're actually very affordable and incredibly full functioning. But I, if, if I did everything to just accommodate a low price point, what would happen is we would sacrifice quality and uh, likewise, I've priced everything in a way that I know makes good business sense. So it's a sustainable business model. So we're going to be here for you. We're going to provide you with excellent customer support. We're going to have the people, the staff to take care of you. And um, I ran a successful computer company called Integrity Computers that a lot of you may, may or may not have known, but we had 19 employees and did significant business and had many significant contracts and did close to 30 million in today's money worth of sales. Um, what we, we never focused on being the cheapest. We focused on being the best. And that's been my approach. Uh, the aluminum that we're using, I can buy several grades lower but it won't perform like this does. And this is the most expensive that I can get that isn't aircraft quality. Um, it's a military grade T6 temper, which there, it's things like that, that we don't compromise because I want this to last for you. I want it to be heirloom. And many of you know that you've, we've seen toppers in conventions that have been used for six and eight convention, crazy heavy use. And you know the wear that happens there and they still look just as new. Uh, Barry Doublet from Board Games Everybody Should just did a video. It's on the bottom of our page. Please go look at that. He did an amazing job on that video. And he talks about his topper traveling to Germany, to the UK Games Expo, to his home. And you can see how nice it still looks. So that's because of our commitment to quality. And, and likewise, our commitment. Again, I'd love to reference Jamie Stegmeier and many other companies that have done a great job on Kickstarter they respond to their customers, they care. And I've tried to emulate and copy that type of behavior. So thank you. Uh, Family Game Night says, when is Berkey Jerky going to be added as a Kickstarter <laughs> Yeah, that, that won't happen, but you never know. You might see me at a convention and see if I have any jerky. I have a spice company and people have come to know me for my jerky, but it went very quickly this year at Origins. <laughs> uh, Barry, Barry Doublet asks, uh, are the new cup holders being sold separately to the last year's models? Yeah, that's a good question. We are, we are working on all of our graphics right now to roll out uh, the new ideas that we have for our cup holders. Our last campaign, we had a fantastic, we made wood cup holders that were very nice, but they're wood and I love handcrafted wood. So I, I thought it was brilliant, but what we, also came up with was this new HDPE material. This is high density polyethylene. And this particular product is so durable. Um, at conventions, I take and I throw it on the floor. I never worry about it. I mean, bury it in the backyard for five years and dig it up. It's going to be the same. It's dishwasher safe. It's it's food grades. You could put guacamole in here if you want. <laughs> this is about fun, right? Um, these, these things are, are just wonderful. They click into our rail system so nicely. But our cup holders and our double component trays, which are designed with a cutout so they can go around your connector cleat, that was an innovation that we came up mid-campaign last year. And we kept thinking like, okay, how do we make that better? Because they had an aluminum cup. And while it functions fine, one thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't accommodate a cup with a handle. Um, it didn't accommodate the large water bottles that a lot of people have, um, that type of thing. So we have the goblet holders for wine and things of that nature. But we went to the drawing board to see how to make that better. And we're working with our good friend, Ben from Daedalus Productions. He does amazing uh, inserts that are stained, some of the best inserts I've seen. Um, I own tons of them. And ben, ben did a great job helping us with our dice towers that you see up here. We still have some of the wood insert that you assemble dice towers. 
Um, he made our beautiful sign for us and we assembled it, and, but all laser cut wood. But we wanted to get better. So Barry, to answer your question, we've been developing a brand new, we teased it in the last update, a brand new collapsible cup holder design. And what's this is a, a prototype uh, made out of lighter weight material that that we're going to be using a much heavier duty material. I wish I don't we should hopefully have that material here within the next two to three weeks. We're hoping I, I can't guarantee, but I hope that's the case. Um, this material I've seen in person, it, it, you can't rip it apart. They use it on as gaskets on the top of blenders. It's a hundred percent food grade. You can, it's dishwasher safe, crazy durable. Um, but what it allows us to do is cause these cup holders to collapse. So this will just show you, um, I have a little piece of acrylic in the bottom, see how it collapsed and then it can pop down. It's brilliant. It has a holder. So your cans or small bottles fit in it so they don't tip over. It also has a component tray in there. So when this thing is collapsed, you get, it looks like that. In addition, we've got a new component tray in the cup holder. So when you plug this in next to your double component tray, it fits evenly. So we create this beautiful surface that you can put your laptop, your tablet, or your war armies. It's, it's a brilliant design. I love this so much. We, we have acrylic plates that can be put down inside of this here so that you can set your big cups in there and not worry about them tipping over. You're also going to be able, you could, I mean, literally, you could use this to be a, a component holder or a dice tray, you know, that just to hold all your stuff in here. Um, it's really a, a fantastic design. In addition to this, the double component tray will be uh, accommodated like this. They're super lightweight, very durable, but then you're going to be able to transport them in your storage bag way easier. So we are getting better and we're improving. We're going to have a beautiful little clear plastic uh, acrylic cover with our logo etched in it. I don't know if you can see that very well. Put it on my background. And this here allows you to have a writing surface on the top. And then this is washable. The last campaign, we had these really cool cork and they, they look great. They work good. But, you know, after time, that cork can, can degenerate, you know, with spills or, or, you know, even condensation. And so we wanted to improve that as well. And we are going to be showing a whole lot more about this design uh, you're going to love it. And we're going to make it as affordable as we can. Our costs are going up a little bit on these, um, but it's it's just better. Um, I, I, I can't thank Ben enough for all the hard work that he has put into this project. We have worked our butt off uh, for quite a few months, and we're right there now where we're going to be able to, to do something very special. Um. <laughs> Barry again asked if you learned to play Tiny Towns properly at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we got to play that at Paul Grogan's house, and that was super fun. But no, I suck at it. But I, I, maybe I'll be able to get better after I actually have some time to play games again. <laughs> uh, Joseph Ferguson asks, has the Lux color from the previous Kickstarter been completely retired? Yes, that's correct. Uh, but we do have some of the accessory rails in the homes and in the Watson available. Um, that's to be determined if we will be able to make any more of those in the future. So if any of you do want with very limited supply, I think we have about 18 and 20 or something. It's very, very limited supply. Uh, but if you want some of those, uh, you can go to our website and you can get those ordered right away. Uh, Swick7 says just a hello from Australia. So happy to be a part of this Kickstarter. Keep up the amazing work. Uh, we are so happy to be at in Australia. We have so many backers. If you could help us share the word in Australia, we want to get 50 units shipped down under. Okay. <laughs> if we can do that, that'd be fantastic. Help people in New Zealand, maybe even some of the, the, the nearby islands. And that'll help extend our reach. And if you know of any game stores in Australia, um, that's one thing too. You know, this is a, 
we're just little guys like everyone else. You know, we're, we're, we're doing really well, but we need your help, man. That's why Kickstarter is here to help us facilitate doing these cool gaming upgrades. Uh, I, I love doing this. I can't, can't thank everybody enough. And people thank us so profusely that, wow, I finally can get an affordable table and I'm not missing anything. In fact, a lot of people think they're gaining more because of all the gamer goodness that we surround our system with. It's not just a topper, it's accessories, it's thematic game mats with beautiful experiences and all the new things that we do. So thank you for the help and thank, thank you for uh, being a part of this. Uh, Barry asks, will you be making larger dice towers? Uh, that's a great question, Barry. We, uh, our castle dice tower is still going to be available from Daedalus, but we are working on some new mold injected dice towers. And currently we have a castle dice tower and a Viking themed. It looks like a long boat with little shields. It's gorgeous. Um, all of these are in the 3D rendering stage. The molds are, are being costed. We have all of this information. We're going to be releasing the pictures of this information shortly. Uh, but it's more than just dice towers. It's a complete component system. And Josiah has seen these. Um, I'm gonna, I wasn't planning on teasing it, but I'm going to do it. I love you guys. All right. One thing, poker trays, these things are great. You know, Roxley Games, they have those great brass poker chips. Oh, baby, they would sit in here perfect. And what's really cool about these, we now have these legs. These are adjustable legs that actually sit on our rail. They hook right on the rail, just like this here. And these here connect underneath the poker tray. You're gonna love this, okay? They connect just like that. Then these here hook right on right on the poker tray. They also can slide. One thing that's nice about it, you can still use them standalone on your table. You can take the legs off and use the trays separately. We have some exciting bundles coming up on these, so stay tuned. But then it gets better. Okay, that's just the poker tray accessory. We have another accessory. And Ben and I collaborated and worked very hard on this, but this is a component tray that holds dice and additional chits, and it allows you to set a dice tower on top of it with a little ramp that runs right into your gaming vault. Um, when you see this stuff, you guys, it, it, it's crazy fun. Um, you know, everything that we've developed is because we're gamers. And well before I started board game theater and and did did uh, media with with Barry Doublet with our Berkey and Badger board game babble show, I was a gamer. I love games, but the thing I loved about games too is I wanted the deluxe ones. <laughs> I wanted the metal coins. I wanted the better mats. I I always went in to trick out my games. So all of this comes from that passion. It comes from, from being a gamer, wanting to improve the experience. And so that's where all this stuff comes from. And we've had great people helping us. But anyway, this, can, this system will hook on the rail and then the dice towers are going to actually sit. So for instance, this is just a prototype. So you have to forgive me. I don't have the actual 3D printed tower, but it sits on top of here. You put the dice in. And now you're not gonna have to assemble your dice towers and you can paint them. The texture is gonna be really cool. And then you can trick out your dice towers and they're gonna be very durable. They'll be washable. They'll be easy to transport. So that's some of the things, I'll just leave this sit here for now. We also have something really cool too. You're gonna to love this. This is a little dice corral. And this actually, it has little pegs that it connects. You won't be able to see this, but let's just attach it first. I can't see right there. You can do it off. Um, we'll do it off camera. But this little dice corral actually hooks on, so your dice stay in a in a tight little space. But you can use it as a dice tray anywhere on your table too. So, all kinds of cool stuff. All right, what's the next? There you can see what's happening with the dice corral. This whole system is brilliant. You guys are gonna love it. We're gonna have a lot of fun. 
Uh, family game night says Josiah showed me the dice we had for our last campaign. Uh, I think this was at Origins. He's asking if we are thinking about doing any other custom dice with Game Topper logo on the dice. Um, I did have someone, and this this may be the same person who mentioned at Origins, like on the the twenty having a little top hat, or like on the six, you know, having a top hat instead on the dice. And I thought that was a fantastically cool idea. Um, I love that. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, it's not planned right now, but that's uh, something I'd love to do. That'd be really cool. We have an idea to make some custom coins uh, that have top hats and different denominations in them and do some fun things like that in the future. But that's not in the offerings currently. But that's that's a great idea. Oops. <laughs> Yeah, I think we might be scrolling yeah, past a few. Just, I'll try to be a little quicker in my answers here. I got a lot of questions to catch up <laughs> on now. Thank you. All right. Uh, Doug Stein says, can you talk about demo the standard cup holders? Trying to determine largest size cup, actually wine glass that would work without going to the goblet holders. Yeah, the wine glasses honestly don't work very well in our existing cup holders. You can put them in there, but they would be tippy. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to do better with uh, the new collapsible cup design. This will be able to accommodate all sizes of cups. I've We have several of even the big barista mugs and they fit in this new design. That's why we've enlarged it swipe, slightly. That's gonna be way better. But for wine holders, highly recommend you get the goblet, goblet holders. Uh, Donna asked postage question, buying a small mat plus one or two mat bags. Um, can you give me an idea of what to be expected for shipping for these three items? Yeah, actually they're gonna be very, very similar in cost because basically we're gonna, we're gonna be releasing this as a stretch goal, um, but our shipping rates are very aggressive. We have negotiated some very good deals with some volume uh, on our spend and we're probably going to have, you know, a hundred thousand dollar in spend in our small packaging. So really fantastic rates, uh, that we have there. Um, but you're going to be able to get two mats very similarly priced to the price of one. And you're going to see some bundles that we're going to come up at, that we're going to explain that and show you the savings by buying more than one thing. The, the mat storage bags, uh, are brilliant. We got to show these things. Um, the mat storage bag is awesome. We are so thrilled about this. This is one thing that a lot of people really wanted to know about. These are super heavy duty nylon bags. This here is a 10 pound mat and it's, it's just crazy solid. It has a zipper that two way zipper that goes all the way across to be able to put your mats in. It has a ribbed edges. So it's perfectly formed. It has a hanger on the end so that you can actually hang this in your closet or wherever you're going on a hanger or whatever. And it also has a clear vinyl sleeve here so you can see which style of mat is in it. Um, it took us a while to dial this in, but these are fantastic. And you notice that we are close to unlocking that four pack of this. These are $15 on, uh, for the Kickstarter special price, normally $19 but we're doing a four pack where because we know a lot of people just need extra bags. Um, these here are, are going to be $40, 10 bucks a piece. Um, stay tuned. Um, when you buy any of our packages, you're going to get two of these free. So when we ship your mats, we will actually ship the mat in this bag. So it's not going to take up an extra $15 shipping charge to ship it for you. We've been done a lot of thinking to make sure that we could do that very affordably and bundle shipping for you folks. You're not gonna get a ton of gotchas. Uh, that's one thing I really try hard is to be really clear about what the costs are. And, and I wanna get better at explaining that to everybody, but um, you're gonna see a very similar shipping cost to what we're showing you to add those extra uh, bags. Now, if you buy six bags, there's gonna be a little bit, uh, and six mats, there's gonna be a little extra shipping, but it'll still be much less per unit. The mat bags will be in two sizes, by the way, too. 38 inch, which will accommodate the Watson and Holmes and 48 inch. And they're big enough to handle the, the bigger 72 inch mats. Uh, Doug Stein, yes, we are sitting at a Lestrade at the moment. So 
This is one of the dragon sculpted rails uh, that we have in Elastrad at the moment. Uh, Rusted Beetle says, Berkey, can I comment on the packaging for my homes? That thing was a cardboard vault. It took me a few <laughs> minutes to break it down to fit into our industrial crusher. <laughs> yeah, we, we went with heavy duty packaging. I, I Last campaign, I spent close to $30 per package with assembly and packaging because we didn't skimp. Um, I was nervous that, that anything would be damaged. And so we worked really hard with our engineers and our box manufacturers. Um, and we used uh, four layers of 350 pound double wall corrugate. In addition, a lot of corners that we did to protect it. Well, on this Kickstarter, we've even improved it. We are adding foam cushioning all the way around the corners, which is gonna provide extra compression uh, ability where, where it'll impact any blows if these get dropped because sometimes handlers are not careful. So I'm doing everything I know how to do to continue to improve. Last campaign, we shipped out over 800 of the big topper packages. And out of all of those units, we had about 31 that were damaged total. Um, it was about a 3% failure rate, which initially we had some that went out that had a high rate with UPS and FedEx. And we changed that to our white glove delivery service. The rate went way down after that. But now we've increased uh, the quality of the packaging. We're also not putting as much stuff in each package, which will make it not as heavy and make the box a little smaller. But we're, we're really doing a great job of making sure that we ensure that package to you uh, with insurance. So you're covered on that as well. We're including that in our shipping costs. And that's one thing I don't talk a lot about the, the whole back end stuff, but we're doing things that you have a white glove delivery service. They're gonna call you a day beforehand to let you know that it's coming. We even have some options where they'll take it to the room of your choice in your house. Uh, Kyle <coughs> O'Connell says, are you able to offer a bundle similar to the Scotland Yard package for the sculpted toppers? Sculpts look great, but added cost for accessories is holding me back. Yeah, stay tuned, brother. Yeah, we have some fun coming up. We're just getting started. Trust me, uh, it, it's going to get better and better and better. Uh, if those of you that viewed our last campaign know know what Berkey came up. And a lot of it happened from feedback just like this. But this is something that we have already have uh, in the works. And so uh, you're going to be well pleased, I think. Gary Edwards says, premium Scotland Yard backer. Super excited. Would Thank buy you. a premium leaf if available. Question, will you be at Gen Con and selling mats? I know I'll need to get, to, I'll get to select two, but I'm pretty sure I need three. <laughs> um, that, that's a great question. In fact, just found out this week, we were gonna be at Gen Con, but we don't have our own booth. We're in a waiting line and it, it's difficult to get a space and, and then we'll get a little eight foot space, which is really hard to manage our product. But what the benefit and the, the blessing of Gen Con is, we have over 30 publishers that have our toppers. When you go to Gen Con, you are gonna see game toppers everywhere. Cool mini or not, uh, come on, has 18 toppers that they have. The big Mycroft, they have Holmes, they have the Lestrades. Um, um, AEG is going to have uh, 12 toppers in their booth and Renegade Game Studios and uh, uh, Academy Games and Arcane Wonders has several them, Tasty Minstrel Games. Some of our, our dear friends in the hobby, you're going to see these everywhere so you can even play on them and all that kind of thing. But yes, to answer your question, we're at Gen Con. We don't have our own booth, but we're going to be partnering with my good friend, Steve Lazinski at Miniature Market. And we are going to have mats for sale there, just like we had at Origins. Uh, we're also going to be giving away some of our game top or game totes with a purchase. Um, the, the mats are going to be at our regular prices um, so that our backers are going to be getting a premium deal. Um, backers on this Kickstarter campaign are going to save close to $20, $25 on our mats. But we are going to have some available at uh, Gen Con from what we have of just our existing stock. We don't have any of the new styles available yet. This is just going to be some of the styles like the adventure mat, the dragon or the dungeon mat, the space mat, the red, the blue, 
a few of those that we'll have available, the green and the older wood grain map. Awesome. Uh, so Joseph Ferguson says he is one wine drinker in the gaming group. What a weirdo. If I got the Virtuoso bundle, could I swap out one cup holder with the goblet holder? And he says, confession, the wine drinker weirdos me. <laughs> uh, the best thing for you to do on that deal is just to add one on in the in the add-on pledge manager. We're going to have some bundles that are going to include some. So we'll we'll work that out. But honestly, for us to make changes where, where it's not that we don't want to, it's that when we're in fulfillment, it, there's an amazing amount of things going on. And the more complex we make it with individual requests, it becomes a nightmare on the back end facilitating that. After fulfillment, where we're doing orders one at a time, it's much easier to make accommodations for people. But in our backer kit software, making exchanges is very difficult and very hard to manage. And we don't want to make mistakes and we want to be efficient in everything we're doing. So the best way to do is just add one on. Swick7 says, question, how does the leaf extension attach to the table? And will it take away from the edge room for cup holder placements? Similar to the center of the table join, how you couldn't have anything there. Go ahead. Uh, so yes, the, the leaf extension attaches with the connector cleat, just like the two halves of our toppers connect together currently. And so yes, it does have a little bit of rail space it takes up, but that's where our double cup holders are perfect for that because they have the, the cutout to where they can fit right around the connector cleat. So that way you can still have cup holders and component trays around that space. Yeah, and these connector cleats are only eight inches. And so that was one of the concerns on our first Kickstarter that people had in the center of the table. If they wanted a person on the left and the right, um, they couldn't put a cup right there. So that's why that innovation happened. It works brilliantly. It's super stable, steady. You'll still have that functionality and versatility. And honestly, you have a lot of rail space there. You have six feet. So you're going to be able to put cup holders anywhere along, wherever it's comfortable. And that's one of the difference about our design with this rail design. Um, this is, it's really amazing because with a dedicated table, you generally have a fixed place. Like I have a beautiful dedicated table I designed that my dad built for us. It's beautiful. We love it. Um, but honestly, I like my game topper functionality a lot better. I mean, that table's precious to me and we love it, but... I don't like the three inch depth that I designed the game vault because my head is looking down, looking into the vault. And then my cup holders are stationary and I'm constantly bumping into them. And depending on how many people we play, if there's just two of us, I have to reach way around the table to go get my cup. Now these here, we put them anywhere you want. They go anywhere and they just slide. I mean, you can do whatever you want. The versatility, um, I, I'm telling you, I, our, our toppers don't have legs. Um, but the cost of a gaming table is not the legs. Trust me. It's all the craftsmanship of the top. And you're getting a game topper that is, is a fraction of the cost of a dedicated table with functionality like this. That's It's really brilliant in my opinion. And I'm crazy biased. But <laughs> uh, So apparently it is base plant, not bass plant. Oh, thank you. Base plant. And I can see that now. His little picture as someone playing uh, an instrument. But uh, right. so Baseplant asked, are we going to see any privacy screens this Kickstarter? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> we, <laughs> we have current some of our player screens in stock. They hook on the rail. They lock in. They're just a simple piece of wood. Um, a, a lot of people like them. A lot of people don't use them. Um, they, they would protect from that occasional glance, which was really the function. Um, with our new dice tower designs and the trays that can fit underneath them, that dice tower can be reversed to go either direction. That's going to provide a certain amount of privacy the way we've designed our trays. So I think we're going to be able to provide that type of, of functionality without having those separate pieces that you have to take on and off. So I think we've got, actually gotten a little better with that. Uh, Chad... I apologize for this. Uh, Clausen says, question, will the bundles be able to upgrade to these new cup holders? Yes. So 
thank you for the question. Um, this has been our intention all along. We just have been working really hard to get all of the artwork together as we just started receiving the prototypes. So wish that would have been done ahead of time where we could have done a better job of presenting it immediately. Um, but this has been our plan. So you're going to see some really fantastic upgrades. Uh, we're going to make it uh, affordable. I'm, I'm going to, I know that I have some increased costs, but I want to do better for my backers. I, I need to make good business decisions, um, but I'm going to make these things attractive and you're going to see some changes to our packages. So those of you that have already backed a package, uh, hang on, uh, don't, don't back out because it's going to get better. Trust me. Uh, by the end of this campaign, you're going to see some improvements without increased increased costs, and you're going to see ability to upgrade things at a fraction of what it would normally cost. So we're going to do right by you. Uh, Rachel Baker says, cannot wait for my homes. Thank you for this product. Thank you for being a backer. Yes. And she also says, can you show the collapsible cup holder again? She missed it the first time. <laughs> it's, this video, by the way, uh, brought to you by Game Toppers 2.0, <laughs> will be recorded and it'll stay on YouTube and it'll stay up on the page. So if you want to go back and watch the video, you can. But I'll show you real quickly. This here is it is it's in collapse form. You can see that there's a component tray there for your cup holder and component tray up here on top and in the phone in the and then it collapses down like that. And that allows you to put your larger cups. This is it's very difficult to show this in in video and hold it. But you can see that there's this is a pretty good size mug and there's still room to get additional larger mugs, larger. And again, this design, it, it's just so brilliant. And when you see the new material that's hopefully coming soon, um, it's going to be really brilliant. It's going to be a, a big upgrade to the way we've done it in the past. And uh, you'll see the graphics change on our packages when we're able to offer it. Uh, Tara Thomas asks, when will the contest winner be announced? Any hints on what will be in the prize package? Yeah, good question. Um, um, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to talk about that on Kickstarter here because we're not, this is uh, something we're doing totally outside of Kickstarter. This is a, a separate promotion on GameToppersLLC.com. And so you're going to see details about it there. We do have the reveal video uh, to see the Holmes Clues, which is just a lot of fun and has some references that, but stay tuned on the Game Toppers LLC page. And trust me, that package is going to be a premier package. Um, if you if if you guys were to win that, we're going to work that out with you if you've pledged in a campaign as well. So, um, but again, that is not a Kickstarter campaign uh, uh, offering that we're not talking about contests uh, in the campaign. So, um, would address that on our website. Thank you, uh, Tony Simpkins. Can more than one mat fit in one of these bags? Yeah, good question. No, they are custom fit. So if you have two mats, you'll want to get two bags. Um, we do have, however, a double rail bag. Now this is a prototype and it, it's, it's slightly oversized right now. We're talking about that, but this double rail bag, it has a large, you got it? It has a large zipper on both sides. In addition, it is padded. And we're going to open the flap here and try to show it to you so the camera can see. But you can see here it has a divider right here. And that allows you to have your rails inside of here. But you could technically put one mat in here and one rail. Um, honestly, there's enough space that you could wrap your mat around your rail and have two rails with two mats in this same bag. Now this is fully padded and this is a little bit heavier duty uh, protection type of bag for your product. The mats do not require that level of storage, but these things here are brilliant. It's a beautiful bag. Um, we're gonna do our best to make that affordable. Um, we're even talking right now about some bundles that would allow us to, allow us to work with people who buy rail bundles to accommodate that. So thank you for that question. Apologize for the camera work. Uh, we have a <laughs> fixed camera and 
Uh, we're doing the best we can with that. We'll try to do a better job of making some videos of these things for you. Uh, Helen Adams says, question, a lot of my multiplayer gaming is at cons. What size would you recommend to upgrade those cruddy con tables? <laughs> well, that's a really great question, actually. A lot of people take their toppers to conventions. Um, you know, the they are portable. We have a really nice storage bag. You'll see there's a little storage bag video on the website uh, that you can see on the campaign site. And it, it works really well. It has two heavy duty reinforced handles, but um, honestly, they're, they're, you know, 75 pounds. And so it, it, we do have, you, if you have two people carrying it, it's good, but you don't want to carry it uh, three blocks. You know, it's, uh, it's still a larger deal, but it, it's protected really well. So a lot of people use that functionality. Um, most of the tables that you see at conventions are these 30 inch by six foot lifetime tables. Um, the Holmes topper is brilliant for that. It really performs well. That's what most of the publishers use. But um, honestly, the Adler topper, which is three foot by four foot, that's a little bit smaller and easier to handle to take to a convention. And we'll have a really beautiful bag for that as well. And you can play a lot of games on a, I mean, you, even this Lestrade and the Hudson, we got a, our last campaign, we offered the Hudson as a separate unit. That's half of the Watson. And that's a 30 by 38 play area. Remember the rails are three and a half inches. So you always add seven inches to the outside dimension. The Hudson is a great little table. That's the one we take out camping. Um, my wife and I celebrated our 33rd uh, wedding anniversary and we went up to Duluth, the North Shore at a cabin and we brought the Hudson for our gaming table. It was perfect. We played all kinds of different games. We played Ticket to Ride on it. That was a little tight, but it was, it was fine. Um, so there's the, the, don't dismiss the Hudson or the Lestrade as being a good option for gaming. It's, it's obviously not great for larger games. That's why the Watson, I really feel is probably the perfect topper for me, but I don't do miniature games. So if you're playing big miniature games, you, you need the Mycroft. Um, but for most of us, I think most of the games out there, uh, the Watson's a beautiful example and, you know, any of the smaller toppers are great to transport to the camp, to the conventions, and and even the Watson and Holmes are pretty manageable. Tony Simkin says it was great meeting you guys at Origins, and the new mats in the boardroom were a great update. And then he says, "I'm a Reichenbach Falls Fall package backer. Does fall mean Thank that you. I might receive it this fall? <laughs> I see the option stated shipping in March 2020." Yeah, it's a. Uh, all of our names are Holmesian themed and Reichenbach Falls is a location. So uh, we're trying to play off that whole Holmesian theme with all of our product offerings. And uh, we, we do expect a delivery for March of 2020. I get to give you guys all a heads up on delivery and all that kind of stuff. We have already been in, we have vetted and honed in many of our processes and our mats will be coming in early. Our, our aluminum is already ordered. Um, our manufacturing processes and capacity are, are wonderful. We could produce up to 500 toppers a month if needed. So we are going, my, my biggest bottleneck, if anything, is going to be some of our accessories and, and uh, our storage bags getting here so we can package toppers in storage bags, all kinds of different things that we're doing. Um, we're hoping that we will exceed your expectations. Um, I'm not promising it. I, I really thought I could deliver by December. And the more I thought about shipping problems at Christmas and, and things that happen that are beyond your control, um, that happened to us on the first Kickstarter. And I just felt like, you know, I need to give everybody a little more margin and, and not, not, not overpromise anything. I want to exceed your expectations. So We'll see how it all goes. You'll notice after this campaign, I still will communicate well with you and be very transparent about everything we do. I show you manufacturing videos, all kinds of things, and you'll be right along for the ride. Uh, Berkey's not going to leave you after this campaign. <laughs> um, Doug Stein says, thank you for hosting the stream. This has been very helpful and is making me even more excited about backing this. Love the idea of the collapsible cup holders. 
we wine drinkers are happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pumped too, man. Thank you so much for joining in. We did this last time. We're going to do a couple live ones at a couple game stores. Uh, Kay King is going to uh, join me and uh, uh, hopefully I'll be able to do something at Dice Tower here next week. We'll see what Dice Tower Con, we'll see what happens uh, about that. But this is a way for us to interact with you. And I, I love it. I, I, I know I ramble a little bit. I'm so excited about all the different products. Uh, but we're very happy to answer any questions you have. And that's what you're going to know about us. Josiah is very thoughtful and Kay is very thoughtful. Uh, we value everyone. And uh, we want to show you guys the, the most respect we can to answer. There's no, there's no dumb question. If you don't understand something or if we're not clear, we'll make it clear. We'll, we'll do our best to get better if there's anything we're not communicating well. And uh, we, we want this interaction. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rachel Baker says, for the Baker Street package, that includes the basic rails, correct? Uh, the, 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 the Baker Street bun, uh, package, actually, you're going to have three options. You can buy the standard powder-coated black rail with the black HDPE corners, or you can get the luxuriant new, the natural oak with the black HDPE corners, or the premium walnut. So you're going to have options, and that's going to be really simple in the late pledge manager. Uh, you're going to, you're going to pledge for that level right now. And then it's going to come up and say, do you want the standard? Do you want the luxuriant Oak or do you want the premium Walnut? And it'll charge you accordingly. It'll be super simple. And that'll be taken care of in the late pledge manager, as well as your shipping charges and all that will be charged after the fact. So in a sense, you get a little more time to pay because your Kickstarter payment will be what you pledge for. And th this is one thing too, I'll just mention here. A lot of people are, have asked questions like, well, I just want to get some accessories. How do I pledge? Because there isn't a specific pledge for each of the accessories. It's super simple. Back for a buck or right on the screen when it comes up, it says you can back $10 without a project, um, uh, without a product. That's fine. I don't expect that from anybody, but just back for a buck. And then if you think you're going to buy $500 worth of stuff, just put in $500 that helps us reach some stretch goals. That amount will be charged at the Kickstarter, but all the way through the end of the Kickstarter, you can change that. So if you decide to do something else, even if you need to cancel, you're able to do that prior to the Kickstarter. And then you can add on in the late pledge manager. So there's a lot of, lot of versatility for you to add stuff, however you would like. So any pledge that is done uh, will be as a credit in the late pledge manager. So if you put that 500 in, when you go in the late pledge manager, it'll say you have a credit of $500 that you can spend on things. So, that's, that's correct. Uh, Tony Simpkins asks, if he's placing this on a nice piece of furniture, does he need to put something on the table to protect it from scratching? I'm, I'm so glad you asked that question because uh, at the top of the video, I'm going to change on the campaign, the video. So, so it, it's at the very top where you hit play. You're going to be able to see some really nice pictures of the functionality of how the topper works, all of that. But I clearly show the bottom and the construction of the topper with the cross supports and this 3M rubberized material. This stuff is amazing. Um, it does two things. It protects your fine furniture. Uh, we've never had a complaint, a customer service issue with any furniture being damaged. We have a beautiful oak table. And that was the first consideration I made when we decided to do aluminum. So secondly, it creates this large friction footprint you virtually, you, you move the under table before you move the topper. It's, it's like even when you put the two together, you don't want to try to slide them together because they won't slide. Um, it, you want to tilt them at a slight angle. You'll see this in the video and to mate them and then set down and it virtually just becomes one piece. People are amazed that there's no clamps. There's nothing. It's gravity and this friction footprint and it does not mar your table. So if you have beautiful furniture, um, I think you can rest assured you won't have a problem with that. I think we've addressed that. Helen Adams says, <coughs> okay, you've convinced me. Just upgraded to the home since most of the cons I go to are smaller. 
Thank I you think, very much. Yeah, thank you, Helen, so much. Thanks for all your help, Helen, by the way, with Rob Oren's channel. I know you help Robert a lot, and Rob's a good friend of mine on, on Rob's Tabletop World, and uh, he has a couple videos down below in the campaign, too, and uh, I know you've helped him with that, but thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Rachel Baker and Base Plants wish you a happy anniversary. Uh, thank you. Uh, Base Plants says they just celebrated their 20th. Uh, and guess what the gift to each other is? That's right, the Holmes Dragon Sculpt. Yeah, baby, so, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, Rachel Baker also says your enthusiasm is infectious. Ah, oh, thank so you, thank you. True. Well, I love this stuff, I really do. Uh, it's easy for me to talk for hours. In fact, I, I think I over talk because I, <laughs> I love this stuff. This is this is our, our life and, and we love bringing this gaming upgrade to people. That's that's what the the testimonies, you go to our Game Topper Nation Facebook group. I mean, this is just, I, I, I told everybody, listen, this is not a customer service portal. Please don't ask your customer service questions here. If you ever have a problem, email me at Berkey at Game Toppers LLC or support at Game Toppers LLC.com and you're going to get taken care of. But this Facebook group is just for us to share our fun share our pictures, what we're playing. If you have an idea, oh, what about this? Oh, what about this? It's like it's like a think tank for us. And we get to relate to one another. And to me, this Game Topper Nation, this is almost like family. It's like I, I've gotten to know so many of you and I'm so grateful. I, I, mean, I could list so many people's names. I mean, Chris Loudermilk, uh, this, last year he wrote this uh, Night Before Christmas poem that was like unbelievable. Just I, I couldn't believe that somebody would take the effort to do that. And I met Chris Henderson at Origins and he brings us a bottle of champagne for us to share after this Kickstarter ends because he knows we're going to be successful and celebrate. And I'm going to do something fun for a celebration video when we get all done. But it's it's backers and the community that is fueling us. And I, I can't thank you enough for that. So, Super Psyched says, I just read that the Mycroft is three pieces. Is yep. a leaf already part of that topper? That's correct. The, the We talked about this earlier in the show, but the, the Mycroft is basically a Moriarty, which is two 24-inch halves and a 24 inch extension leaf. So you have three parts, um, two connector cleats, uh, you have components that go around those connector cleats, uh, but you basically get two toppers in one. You don't have to buy an accessory rail because if you had an accessory rail, you'd only have a two foot by four foot topper. And while it's kind of interesting, it'd probably only be good for card games, um, little two, two player card games. So that's why we're not offering that. The versatility now, of the Mycroft is exceeded what we had before by giving you a Moriarty and a four foot by six foot. Uh, and Helen says she's she's blushing now and that she loves the community. <laughs> that's why she does what she does. Yeah, so. that's why we do it, right? It looks like we're all cut up at the moment. Well, I think we've gone quite a quite a bit. I, we can take a couple more questions. I don't know what time it is. It's one nineteen, so we've gone over what we were thinking. Um, we'll just pause for a few moments to see if there's anything else that you uh, is urgent for you. Um, I I can give you a couple heads up on a couple things here. Uh, one of the things that we are doing with our thematic game mats, there's our, our good friends at Dwellings of Everdale um, at Breaking Games. Their Kickstarter's running right now. Uh, go check it out. These, these are great people, Peter Vaughn and Sarah. I'm just so excited to work with them, but we're doing a custom map for them in the Adler size, the 36 by 48. It's gonna be available on their campaign. Um, we're talking next week actually about maybe making another game topper compatible size because it's got this really cool water map in it, but we'll see what happens with that. Um, but we're gonna be working with other companies to do some amazing things. Uh, I, I can't talk about some of the things we're gonna do, but it's gonna fit with being Game Topper compatible, but also make your experience for some of these specific products fantastic. Um, our fantasy map is in production, Yaroslav. I, I love this guy. Uh, he's a professor of art in Poland. He blows my mind how awesome he is. Uh, our Viking mat is 
It's my favorite mat right now. The Scythe inspired mats. They're not an official Snowmeyer Games project, um, but we have permission to make, and Jamie's excited. He loved the art on it. I'm like, I can't wait to get that mat and play Scythe. I love Scythe, and, and it's going to be crazy. Um, I can play all kinds of other resource games on it because it's resource. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, when you see the fantasy mat, I have already got the sketches to him. It's going to have dwarves. It's going to have elves and orcs. And uh, maybe a dragon or two <laughs> and some paladins running around. Um, it's going to have one inch grip, uh, one inch grids. So it's going to be awesome the way we're designing it. So there's more space for grids for fantasy role playing games. Um, any your RPGers, you're going to I think you're going to really enjoy that. Maybe a couple more questions. Looks like Doug Stein asks, would you recommend a Watson supported by a four foot table? That would leave about 10 inches hanging off each end. So a four foot by four foot for a Watson, honestly, is a little bit short. Uh, the width is wonderful. And the benefit of having a four foot width like that, um, all of your side rails will just barely be supported by the inside of the under rail. Um, so you're going to have really good support on the sides. Uh, you can put all your weight on it and, and there'll be no issues whatsoever. The ends are going to be fine, but if you have people on the ends that put a lot of weight on the end, you could maybe get just a slight bow. Now it, It's minor. The connector cleat is eight inches and they lock in and it virtually makes that reel very solid. But we would really recommend that you get about 60 inches length. So if you have a 48 by 48 table, if it has a leaf, I'd put the leaf in it and get that extra support or put something underneath the rail uh, on, on the ends to support it just a little bit better. But um, 48 inches on the length is a little bit light. Uh, Yosef Ferguson says the new cup holders look great, but I actually really like the old ones with the brass cups, um, which are actually anodized aluminum. Yep. Uh, will they continue to be available in this Kickstarter or are they being replaced by the new uh, collapsible. Well, in all honesty, we're hoping to replace them because it'll be much easier for us to provide a better solution that is collapsible. And when you see them, I think you're going to find that you'll like them a lot better because not only they are they cup holders, they are also component trays and they're much easier to store and they're much easier to transport. Um, we'll look at making the uh, initial ones available because we'll probably be doing these as an upgrade. Uh, but uh, I think the cost will be very affordable to where you'll probably want to take a look at it. That That's yet to be determined. We'll see how everything goes with everyone. And then Barry, he asked this one earlier, but I, I kind of went over it because of, of time. But he's asking, will there be a, a Ratafia glass holder? Nah. <laughs> Ratafia! There's a long story about, about uh, Epernay, Champagne country in France. And uh, they have a byproduct called Ratafia that my wife and I uh, were able to try when we were in Germany last year and then went to France. And uh, this stuff was pretty amazing. But I think we might have some Ratafia with our celebration video. <laughs> it's still, the, the bottles are still unopened. And we're caught up again. <laughs> and we're caught up. Uh, I, I think it's a good time for us to cut. We're going to do a bunch more of these. I have new videos coming, close-ups of the Fantasy Rail and the Viking Rail, uh, some new bundles that we're working on, updated graphics for the collapsible cup holders, the new dice tower systems, all the accessories. We have several other things that I haven't even shown you yet because we're, we're doing it a little bit in, in, in stages. We want to continue to offer stretch goals. And, and I, the biggest thing that I can say about all this stuff, we are trying to do everything we can with the utmost quality, the utmost class, um, with the best customer service we can offer. And we're gonna work hard to continue to earn your trust. And, and uh, I just can't thank you enough for everything you've meant to us as a company to, to to allow this dream to happen. We're doing it. We're doing it well. We're, we're able to create this gaming upgrade that, you know, <laughs> this is a silly little thought, but Bill Gates had a dream. And his dream was to replace it, that every, every home would have a computer on it. And he developed DOS. 
and he gave that away. I can't give away game toppers. Um, and of course, we're no, not going to have any kind of scale like Microsoft. But the thought is there. Wouldn't it be great if every gamer could enjoy an upgraded gaming experience like this? And I realize that's probably unrealistic, but that's our goal. We're trying to do something really special that's accessible, high quality, you can use for years, and upgrade every game that you play from here on out. So that's our goal and that's our commitment. And please help us share this. Please, uh, when you see our posts on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, if you could retweet it or reshare it, uh, that helps get eyes on the campaign. It really does. Um, uh, comments that you have in the, in, if you've been a prior backer, please share your experience. Uh, we would love that interaction and it helps encourage everybody to see what we're doing and to know who we are. Cause a lot of people don't know who we are and we, we'd, we'd appreciate that. So I think uh, I see uh, quite a few things coming through, but people are just, just saying thank you. And, uh, we appreciate you all so much, you know, so without the backers, we couldn't do any of this. So everyone who's, you know, along with us for the ride, who asked questions, a lot of great questions today. So thank you everyone. And uh, there's more to come. Well, with that, we're going to shut this baby down and we'll see you again at the topper. And uh, thanks so much.